A very good morning to one and all students. I am very happy that uh, you people uh, are not viewing my video, uh, which I have posted in the previous uh, uh, links and all. So please view the video. Okay, so, so don't think that I am marketing for me. No. So it is actually we. I am preparing uh, uh, for the sake of few people. So for this one preparation of video, either it is 15 minutes or 20 minutes, I spend nearly uh, two hours to two and a half hours. So please prepare, uh, please view the video and give also some comments. No problem. Either positive or uh, negative comments, you can give. No problem. Okay, either in my WhatsApp or even in that uh, video also you can give. Okay, we'll go to the topic directly now. So we are seeing the third unit. I think already I have uh, posted a video related to hyper competition. Uh, continuity of that today we will be seeing about uh, marketing strategies. So we will be seeing uh, uh, in this slide uh, there will be four actually. Market leader, challenger, follower and niche. Four strategies we will be seeing and what they, follow, what they do to be alive in the market. What are all the methodology they follow? That are all we'll be seeing. First of all, uh, what is the what are all the objectives? So we should first of all understand the competitors and also the customers while we are doing the competitor analysis. That is the first thing. And then you should know the fundamentals of competitive uh, marketing strategy. It should be based on creating value for customers. So if you're not creating value for customers, no, you cannot withstand in the market for a long time. And you should know the need of uh, balancing customer and competitor organization in order to become a truly market-centered organization. You should know uh, simply for namesake and all, uh, you're not supposed to do any competition. So if you're not focusing, you know, if you're not balancing both customer as well as competitor organization, you cannot be in market centered and all. So with these three objectives, uh, we enter into the topic actually what, uh, first of all, I'm not going to enter directly into marketing strategies. We will see the definitions and we'll see some few more slides. Then we'll talk about uh, what they do actually. And uh, I think everybody knows Intel. So they are, uh, the, uh, they are dominated in the chip industry and uh, they focus on uh, pro heavy focus on they will be focusing mainly on product and advertising innovation and R&D investments this only they focus because as they are the uh, ruler leader in the market so they focus only on advertising innovation and R&D investments and also uh, changing market needs whether uh, have challenged Intel to adopt but also uh, they will be doing it and they mostly they capitalize now on internet so because they, nowadays all the things is based on net only so they focus mainly on internets nowadays so and uh, this is an example actually we will see why we have seen this slide in the coming uh, uh, when I push the slides now you can see for which strategy it really applicable. So competitive advantage. So we should know an advantage over competitors gained by offering the consumers greater value than competitors offer. So little bit advantage, little bit more. This small slide I will tell and what they are coming to tell. If you are giving somewhat high more than of your competitor to win uh, to give to the customer that and all it will be coming under a, a competitive advantage so okay if uh, many examples you can tell so if one company is doing something no you should do better than that either in price you can do or you can you can do in product quality you can do or in anything you can do and the next one is a competitive uh, analysis so you should know identify overall your you should not take all the companies are competitors you should know to identify key competitors 
and what are their objectives, strategies, strength and weakness and according to that the reaction patterns you should adopt and uh, selecting you should also select which competitors to attack or which competitors to avoid. So this is a very big uh, strategy you should uh, study. You should not take the full competitors and you, can, you should keep on target. So you should identify uh, whom you are going to target, which competitor you are going to target and uh, the, you should know their objectives, strategies, strength and weakness and uh, you should select uh, uh, this thing and you should uh, tackle only that and so a few competitors you can avoid also. So you should know that strategies and all. This is a, a competitive uh, advantage and this one is competitive analysis definition. And uh, for this now, uh, steps in analyzing competitors, identify uh, the company's competitors, then you should, uh, just now we talked now, you should assess the competitors competitors objectives strategies trends and weakness and reaction patterns these things you should do and select which competitors to avoid or attack this is how you're going to select um, how you're going to analyze your competitor steps in analyzing competitors so first you should do identifying the competitors and the first thing in identifying competitors is and the firms uh, face a wide range of competition. So normally, how you avoid when number of products will be there in the line, and uh, you should not be careful to avoid a competitor myopia. No, so I think uh, you should know what is myopia by seeing this video. If anybody else is sending me a message on what is myopia, marketing myopia, when I am coming to class and you when you come to college, I will give you fifty rupees. Uh, be careful to avoid competitor myopia and you should know to identify the competitors either from industry point of view or from market point of view and sometimes competitors map also can help to identify the uh, competitors and uh, actually I think everybody knows this one Britannica so it is an encyclopedia uh, they might be many people might be thinking uh, the competitors for encyclopedia is the publishers. No, um, nowadays the real competitor for them is only the uh, software encyclopedias and the internet. That is the main uh, uh, competitor for them nowadays. And uh, how you are going to assess the competitors? Uh, determining the competitors' objectives, then their strategies then their weaknesses and strength and estimating the competitor's reaction. So this thing, no, you should, these are all the duties of R&D. What really the competitors do and their weakness and strength we should identify and we should not target the strength, we should only identify the weakness and we should target that so that we can win over that particular, uh, in that particular market. And this one is how uh, selecting competitors to either to avoid or to attack. So you should first of all identify the strong or weak competitors that is actually customer value analysis. Then close or distant competitors. Uh, most of the companies know they only compete with uh, the close competitors for them and uh, the existence of competitors offers several strategic benefits, either a, a good competitor or a bad competitor you should identify. According to that you can offer a, a several strategic benefits for the customers actually. This is what the steps in process of a competitor analysis. First of all you should identify the competitors, assess the competitors, then select competitors Selecting competitors to avoid or to attack. So basic winning competitive strategies now. You either you should go for a cost leadership. That is what either you, can, you should plan lowest production and distribution cost. You should plan in that angle. Okay, overall cost leadership. Where you can go for the uh, low, lowest production and distribution costs lowest production cost please 
understand that no is to production cost and distribution cost and every time you can go for differentiation so whenever you are going for some features no every time you should go for differentiation in the product and focus so you are going to focus on one particular segment that is what here we can do a few market segments better to enter into full market so you can avoid that and you can focus only on the segment which you are going to really target in the market and this one is uh, uh, competitive strategies no? so some dis disciplines uh, operational excellence uh, superior value via price and convenience then customer intimacy uh, by creating a strong relationship with buyers and their satisfying needs and uh, product leadership so every time you should have a product innovation in your uh, from your marketing or from your company point of view so that uh, you can be the leader in that particular uh, uh, market uh, position so that is the main thing keep on talking about product innovation adding new product adding a new feature in the product everything you can do and this one this is what we are talking market leader uh, he'll be having 40% of market share market challenger will be having 30% of market share market follower is only 20% and market niches they concentrate only on one particular segment of people so they'll be having only 10% of market share and uh, so now we'll be talk talking about market leader so what they will be doing, what strategies they should follow now. Every time they should keep on finding new users. Then every time also you should talk about discovering and promoting new product users. Please identify new product users also. It will better more than uh, focusing on new users. You should also talk about new product users of your product. And then uh, encouraging uh, greater product usage also you should do. And every time you should keep on protecting your market share and you should talk about innovation continuously and profitability rises with the market share while you are expanding the market share actually. So this is what a very best example if I want to tell is actually um, uh, if you take soft drinks industry you now we can talk for uh, three strategies here market leader challenger and follower now i am going to take only global actually so global in soft drinks if you are talking no uh, coca cola is the market leader and pepsi is the challenger actually and uh, uh, if you are talking for indian market uh, pepsi is the market leader and uh, uh, coke is the market challenger and follower is thumbs up like that we can keep on talk okay and the next one is about uh, uh, market challenger so every time his duty is to challenge the market leader so you should take high risk and you'll be having high gain also and uh, you should keep on talk about competitive advantage over the leader that is the main key for the success and also they should for uh, the another uh, thing they should do is always they should challenge the firms of the same size or smaller size or any regional or local firms also they should uh, uh, keep on do they should challenge the thing and then every time they should talk about only frontal attack so fr frontal attack or uh, indirect attack frontal full frontal or indirect attack this indirect attacks they will be talking about so i think uh, full frontal indirect attack means sometimes immediately they will be launching in the market so that is indirect and full frontal attack now so targeting about the market leader their weakness they will be talking there that is an all that an all uh, a frontal attack they will be talking directly attacking the um, competitors of that particular uh, product like that and all they will be doing actually this is what i told you so this is for global this slide is only for global market but for indian market we are having 
Pepsi as market leader and Coke as a challenger. But this slide uh, we are having it for uh, it's a global market. So this is this slide they are talking about Pepsi as a challenger in the global market. And this one uh, for market follower, whatever uh, uh, they will be doing, no, they will follow the concept is simply the market leader. Whatever the leader is doing, they will follow. Uh, their uh, focus is to only improve the profit instead of market share. So every time they will be keeping on learning from uh, market leaders experience and they will be copying or improving on uh, the leaders offering and strong profitability they will be having. Whatever the leader and also we can add also the challenger also we can add. They will be following the leader and challenger whatever they are doing they will be adopting that particular strategy and they will be implementing for them. See, they will not be talking about pro market share, they will be talking only about uh, profits. That is a major thing. So next one is uh, uh, niche marketing. So niche marketing, uh, targeting sub-segments. You will be targeting only the very small segment in that particular market. So good strategy. This one is a very good strategy for uh, uh, small firms with limited focus they can uh, have but high margins we can get and uh, they will be having a specialization that is a major advantage. Specialization is uh, very much key for them by either by market or by customer or by product or marketing mix lines itself. So this is the uh, very big actually uh, if I am coming directly if this classes and all is being conducted directly you know one slide we can take it for one hour. So it is a very live examples we can give as it is an online class and my time is uh, limited to upload in videos in YouTube that are all it's a major problem so I am going very fast. So, you, But tomorrow I will take again in the class. Don't be worried. Uh, very best example for market niche everybody knows about it and uh, Every time uh, we should uh, talk about uh, uh, companies can be can become so competitor centered, uh, but they focus, uh, but they lose their customer focus. That is a major problem. So normally we should not be doing that. We should go only for market centered companies. Then only you can win over in that particular uh, market. So or else it will be very difficult for you. Competitor centered companies and customer centered companies so if you if you're targeting no sometimes you will be missing something so you should go only for market centered companies and uh, for this no for that particular uh, strategy michael porter has given five force uh, five model five forces of model where you can talk about uh, uh, how if you're being in this no you can really win over the market according to Michael Porter uh, five force model actually one is actually a threat of new entry then competitive uh, rivalry then uh, bargaining power of suppliers bargaining power of buyers and uh, threat of the substitution this is actually uh, the four Porter's five force model so how uh, uh, people or the companies, sorry, not people, companies uh, uh, to win over these strategies. No, in competition, in competitive strategies, he has designed one model. That is what we'll be seeing in this slide. So threats of new entries. So with every time I, when I, as soon as uh, when I begin the classes in marketing, I used to tell for all the segment any new product is coming in that particular day or in that particular week so a very big competition in all the fields not in any fields without new entry is not every day a new product is entering and that is a major problem brand equity so you should try to create a brand equity among the customers and these are all the things are the main thing you should concentrate existence of barriers to entry, then economies of product differences, then major thing is brand equity, 
then switching casts. So if you are going for any other thing, no, how you are going to switch the cast, adding some features, so you are going to go for some other production line. So switching over the cast and for capital, what you are going to do for the capital, the distributions, the cost advantage, then expected retaliation, what is that uh, going to uh, whenever we are uh, launching, what is it we expect back in the market? Then government policies every time that also it is a major problem. So whenever, uh, very best example I will tell for government policies in automobile sector. That automobile sector when government uh, has actually, I think everybody knows in car, Maruti company, Maruti Suzuki, Suzuki Motors. So they are having one model called Swift Desire. Now it is actually the size has been reduced. If you see when Desire was launched, no, the size was somewhat big. So because of government policies, the tax, if it is going, the length of the vehicle is going beyond certain size, no, the tax they have increased. So immediately what they have done, no, uh, they have reduced the, the length was reduced. Uh, now you are seeing that Swift Desire with uh, size which has been reduced. When the Swift Desire was launched, I am talking about that. I am not talking about uh, versions. I am not talking about version which has been changed. No. So please go and check old Desire. What is the length and now what is the length? So that is what uh, a government policy sometimes they keep on changing. No? How you are going to tackle it and then uh, competitive rivalries number of competitors in that line and then you should also check the rate of industry growth then talking about exit barriers diversity of competitors because if you go and uh, see in the fmcg you know competitor company will be diversified in all segments but or not it is a major problem here also brand equity for all the competitors will be there then fixer allocation cost per value will be added and then uh, advertising expenses how you are going to spend because that, that and all it will be costing huge high competitor will be spending about uh, 20 or 30 but I am telling very minimum how much you are, the, the company is having the capacity to spend everything you should talk and then here is talking about suppliers powers okay uh, where you can talk about supplies cost relating to firm switching cost switching costs so different degree of differentiation of inputs then substitute inputs everything that also you should study then the supplier concentration to the firm how much concentration is giving weightage for your company then whether we can go for forward integration i think we were talking on that day forward integrations and all uh, or by threat of backward integration of the firms and cost of inputs relative to selling price of the product then next slide comes talking about uh, uh, supplier power and uh, buyer power whether the uh, buyer concentration uh, to firm concentration ratio then bargaining power of the customers then buyer volume, how much the consumers really purchase, the quantity we are talking. And then uh, talking about switching costs related to firm uh, switching uh, costs, buyer switching cost to relative to firm switching cost. And then uh, information availability about the buyers, whether we can go for backward integration. Then buyer price sensitivity, if you are increasing the price. Then price of the total purchase, everything we can talk. And last one is threats so of substitution. So every time we'll be talking about the substitution. If you are increasing the price, people will be going for the substitute product which is already available in the market. Then talking about a perceived level of product differentiation. Everything we should talk substitution when you are talking no. So if you are doing small change, no, immediately buyer will go for any substitute product which is available in the market. So you should identify that also. How many 
substitute products are there in the market according to that also you should plan for the company so with this uh, i conclude uh, uh, the third unit and uh, one thing is there available in the third unit so in the third unit is actually one minute it is there about blue ocean strategy that is your uh, assignment two topics is your assignment that i will tell in the tomorrow's class so with this uh, i conclude uh, this particular session thank you